highly recruited, but he followed his brother Fred's footsteps. He was a starting middle linebacker here from day two. He was a two-time consensus All-America. His Seminoles had a record of 32 and four. They ended the year for those three years when he played at fourth, fourth, and then second, and then the next year they would be one. He had ball wins over Penn State, Texas A&M, and Nebraska. He won the Butkus Award as America's very best linebacker. But that wasn't enough. He also won the Lombardi Award as the best linebacker in America. He was the fourth pick of the first round of the NFL Draft, the middle linebacker of your New York Jets for 12 years. He's an FSU Hall of Famer, retired jersey number 55. Welcome back, Marvin Jones. Wow. We got a lot of folks, Marvin. You must be popular, man. No, it, yeah, it's me. It's all me. Our second legend, our second legend is from Bradenton, Florida. Let's hear it for Bradenton, Florida. He was a two-time consensus All-America. He's FSU's all-time leader in pass reception touchdowns. He became the Atlantic Coast Conference's all-time leader in pass receiving yardage. He averaged 13 yards per punt return. No college player was ever more exciting. He was projected as a top pick in the NFL draft, but he fulfilled a promise to his mom who's here today, and he came back for his senior year to graduate. And that last year, he led Florida State to an undefeated number one rank start to finish national championship. And they played Old Honorable One, and the Seminoles defeated Frank Beamer and Michael Vick in the Sugar Bowl. He, like Marvin, was also the fourth pick in the first round of the NFL Draft. He got more money, though. He got more money. <laughs> <laughs> it's just later in time. <laughs> in three hours, his jersey is going to be put in a frame and retired on that stage. Yeah. Welcome back, Peter Ron. Yeah, there's a lot of people out here. I like that. I'm good. I think he likes that one. How you doing, Pete? I'm nervous. Man. Oh, no. Nervous. No, 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 no. It's your weekend. Now, now, Pete, are you having fun? Yes, I am. Especially when I see the crowd, the fans, yeah. my, my lovely family back here that can't support me. Uh, it's a great honor. Now, Peter, I want you to take us back to 1994, Bradenton. You were all everything in high school, even Mr. Basketball. Why'd you pick Florida State? I'm nervous, man. Oh. <laughs> I'm nervous. Uh, I picked Florida State. You know, growing up, uh, that's where I always wanted to go. You know, I, I tell people all the time that, you know, with my mom, you know, who's the love of my life, and, you know, I love her. And she wanted to come to Florida State, she, but she had me. <laughs> so she didn't get that chance. So. I honor that, and I take pride of that, and I thank God I did. Thank God I did. Peter, you did honor that. Now, Marvin, thanks for coming today. There's a Seminole legend of a Bobby Bowden recruiting visit in Miami, there to see Fred Jones, your brother, who was eight years older. And there's a legend about a little boy who fell asleep with Bobby Bowden. What's the real story? Well, that's almost a real story, but I tell you, just. You gotta understand, long, back then, Coach Bowen was larger than life, especially the Bobby Bowen show, and to be able to have him in our house at that time, you know he was coming because he loved to eat, you know, the home cooking. <laughs> but uh, when he sat there and recruited my brother, I sat there the whole time, and I'm just sitting here with big eyes, just watching him, listening to everything that he said. And, and at the end of it, I told him, I looked at him, I said, you know what, hey, I'm coming to play for you. Yeah. I said, yeah. Were you a 
bad boy at 10 too? Were you already getting, you pretty big? Yeah, it's big, yeah. yeah. yeah all right, all right. Good, good, good. Five, eight, 160 pounds. Oh, yeah, that's big enough. You were bigger than Bobby, probably. <laughs> Now, Peter, you quarterbacked it. Wait, hold on. So you telling me Bobby came to your house? Yeah. Did he come to your house? Oh, man. Wait, but, but the second part of that is my family's from southern Georgia, so they can cook. They can coach like these. <laughs> oh, you must not know about no people back there, man. Right? Uh, hey. Well, I'm about to try some of their food next week. <laughs> yeah. You got some aunties back there that are going to argue with you about that, I think. Yes. Now, Peter, you quarterback Bradenton Southeast. Your big rival was Manatee High, right? Yes, sir. You had a quarterback that was a little bit younger there. Tell us about the rivalry and that other quarterback. Who was that? Talking about Coach Tiger. Yeah! yeah! That one! Now, you know, if, if you're from Bradenton, you know, everybody knows that the rivalry is Southeast versus Manatee. And so, as a little kid, I always wanted to go to Southeast. Everybody back there, I tell you, got an auntie who I was living with, you know. Yeah. Wasn't supposed to go to that school, but I went anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Don't tell yes, us but, it. you know, playing against Coach Tiger, you know, it was a great honor because he was one of the best people that came from Bradenton. And, you know, I just respect him, not only as a coach, but as a person. Oh. Even though we beat him, but I still respect him. Still respect him. That was important. Now, Barbara, tell us. How did Big Brother Fred influence you? What did he teach you about football? Well, the most important thing he taught me about football is always do it 100%, full speed all the time, and always be first at every drill. And that's just the way I practice it, and that's just the way. When I got to Florida State, it was the same thing. And many times, Coach Bob, you know, they would take me out of practice, you know, because they knew, you know, I mean, if it was shorts, I'm a thousand miles an hour. And he said, listen, Mick, you gotta get them out of here. <laughs> thousand miles an hour. Now Peter, talking about practice, they say that competition brings out greatness. Yes. Reminder our fans of some of your fellow receivers in practice out here, your competition at practice. The wide receivers that we had was, we were all special, but you know, some of the greats were Randy Moss, Snoop Menace, Easy Green, Andre Cooper, uh, the list goes on, and I learned everything from them. Ron Dugas, I can't, how can I forget Ron? That's my guy. Thank you, him now. That's a lot of people that practice. <laughs> yes. Now, Marvin, Marvin, I heard Bob Greasy, I went back and looked, and Bob Greasy's this quote. He said on TV, everybody falls backwards when Marvin Jones hits him. <laughs> you once said, that's why they play football on a field so you can dig them up and bury people. Legally, it's illegally. So what's your philosophy of middle linebacker play? Well, it depends on how people take it, but I'll just say it how I visioned it while I was playing. I wanted to come out and intimidate people. That was my game. I was gonna come out and hit you. I was gonna follow you up in the bleachers, up in the <laughs> press box. And, and I wanted to invoke fear in people. And that's what I did, and that's why when I came out and I put the shield on, nobody could see my eyes then. Yeah. And it intimidated people. But, you know, I knew before the game that we were going to win, or how we were going to win our games. Because I used to go in the, in the uh, men's room and, and get the media guy from the other team, and I look through all the pictures, and I go, he's scared, or he's scared. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot this game. <laughs> Marley, I think you did scare him. You scared me sometimes. Now, Peter, yes. you could have gone to the NFL after your junior year. Tell us what motivated you to come back for that senior season with Chris Winkie and your teammates. Uh, really, I came back because we had just lost the year before against Tennessee. So I made up my mind that I wanted to come back, not only to play football, but to do something that my mom wanted me to do, and that's graduate. So I got that one. Well, and he did. You know, I'm sitting, I'm not sitting, we, we got two political science majors from Florida State right here. Yeah. <laughs> now, Marvin, I asked a member of the new FSU staff to describe your play, 
and we've got a recording of that, so I ask Coach Mickey Andrews. Here's what he had to say about you. If you were to draw up a picture or an idea of what you want in a football player, a linebacker, it'd have Marvin Jones' face on it. A lot of times, you, the kids come in, and, and you had to kind of help them learn how to tackle. You know, they'd had fundamentals taught in high school, but you didn't have to teach more, more than that. If you were to... How about that from the beginning? Yeah. Now, Marvis, remind us some of the defensive players that you played with in 90, 91, 92 here. Well, I'll tell you, especially linebacker was good. I mean, Kirk Carruthers was here. And, you know, also, I mean, obviously, you know, playing with Derrick Brooks, I mean, and, yeah. and, you know, what he I mean, hell, we, we, we had the best linebackers. Yeah. I mean, I don't understand why anybody would call any other universe. I mean, any other university, uh, linebacker university. Yo, are you kidding me with the guys we had here? Uh, Corey Soy out on the corner, Kip and Abraham. I mean, I mean, come on, man. I mean, it, that was unbelievable defense. I mean, I mean, and, and the thing was is just we had so many. And, and to be honest with you, my first two years, I, I was done by halftime. I was on the bench. I mean, Ken, we had Ken Alexander also play linebacker. I mean. I mean, I played half of every game for the first two years. <laughs> Was pretty intimidating defense. Now, Peter, let's go back to that national championship game, Super Bowl. Vic versus Warwick. The game was still in doubt. Let's remember how Gene... Now, y'all listen carefully to this call now. Let's listen and remember how Gene Deckerhoff called a certain pass from Chris Winky to this fellow. Seminoles take over at the 43 of the Hokies, dropping Winky, looking Winky, wants to throw the knockout punch to Warwick. Warwick open! Cannot make the catch. Flags throw to the war. Touchdown! He does a touchdown! He did catch it! Touchdown to Warwick State! Alright, Pete, we've all seen that catch. Tell us, what did you say to Coach Bowden before that series? Uh, I knew we was going to win for one. Yeah. Especially because I just lost last year. <laughs> so I knew that. But, I, you know, I just went to Coach Bowden. I said, Coach B, do you want me to finish? Yes. He looked me in the eye and said, get number nine the ball. Yeah. That's what he did. You want it, Nine got the ball, and we got a second national championship. All right, Marvin, I think you probably saw Peter in the NFL, but yeah. describe Peter Warwick as a wide receiver. Well, I'll tell you what. I mean, when you watch the guy, I mean, he's one of those guys that has all intangibles. I mean, like kind of almost like what Mickey said about, you know, certain things that guys have. I mean, he, he has, if I'm looking for a wide receiver, even to this day, I'll I pick him first to be on my team because he had speed, the guy knew what he was doing, he had shakes, he had moves. I mean, hell, I have him doing everything, pump returns, I have him throwing the ball. I mean, but he's just, he's just a fun, you know what it is, it, it's kind of, if you look at him, I look at him like a, 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 a Deion, Deion Sanders of, of wide receiver. Yeah. Yeah. That's a pretty fair description. All right, turnabout's fair play. How would you describe Marvin Jones at middle linebacker? Scared. <laughs> Scared. Hey, look. His, hey, when I was coming to Florida State, all I heard about was helicopter man. I'm like, who is helicopter man? <laughs> when I got here, I knew why. Because they say when he hit you so hard, the helicopter coming on the field. <laughs> I like helicopter man. <laughs> now, Marvin, tonight we're going to see your nephew wearing your 55, Frederick Jones. It's, it's an old family tradition. Tell us about Frederick Jones, your nephew. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, he's a hard working kid, and, and the amazing thing about him is he, he's already graduated in three years with his bachelor's in economics. Hey, yeah. And um, started his master's. Already, so um, I, I, the thing I love about the kid, he's he's a great kid. He's, I mean, you, I mean, you, if you're gonna ask for the perfect kid, he's that type of kid. He's hard, hard work. He does everything that is asked of him. So I'm, I'm just looking for him to have some success, get out there on the field, and and, and show what he can do and, and prove 
um, to me that he can play. <laughs> I said, tough taskmaster. <laughs> All right, two of you, we're going to have a little lightning round here. That means quick answers. We asked some fans to su submit some questions, so here we go. Peter, was a Virginia Tech end zone catch, was that your best catch ever? Yes. Yeah. 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 Marvin, what was your best hit in college? It hasn't happened. Everybody's still alive. <laughs> That's the guy I could ask for. Hey, I know, I'm getting in trouble. No, 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 no. The rules, the rules were different when you played. <laughs> I can play now. So, Peter, who was, who was the best DB that you faced in college? All of them were sorry. <laughs> I was just, you know, right there. I we saw, we saw a lot of DBs on my team. That's right. That's right. Marvin, besides yourself, what other linebacker do you most respect for Dan, play? Derek Brooks. Yeah. 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 We were talking about the best coach ever, linebacker coach Wally Burnham. Yeah. <laughs> Peter, first thoughts when you see somebody in a Gator shirt? My stomach hurts. I gotta use the bathroom. Yeah. All right, Marvin, it's, four, it's fourth and goal tonight. Could you suit up for one play at Middle yeah. Eye Bucket? Absolutely, as long as it's not a toss. No. <laughs> You'll take the dive, is yes, that right? Yes, sir, yes, sir. All right, all right. Ah, uh, we got trouble here. Is trouble and Snoop here? Is trouble still here? No. Snoop? Where's Snoop? All right, Stu, I want you to know some of his friends are back here uh, that will be out there tonight. Lavernius Trouble Coles will be here. The New York Jets. And number one, no, number 13, Marvin Snoo-Menace. Northwestern High School. Uh, yeah, you can do that. Is, is a little man from Atlanta here, David? David, are you there? No, nope. he'll be out there too. There's a short fellow in a in a trench. I mean, it's sort of a poncho here. That could be anybody. It could be, but <laughs> but, but he's he's came down from Atlanta this morning to honor his cousin namesake Warwick Dunn. Came down to honor. His oh, cousin yeah. namesake. They got could be right. All right, Peter Warwick, it's your night tonight. Here's some names. Yes. Here's some names before you: Belitnikoff and Sellers, yeah. Simmons and Ward, yeah. Sanders and Dunn, yeah. Winky and Jones, yeah. Brooks and Buckley. Yeah. And soon they're going to bring out a framed number nine. What does that mean to you to have your name in the lights on that stadium? Yeah. Uh, I think it's just. A humbling experience for me, you know. I just thank God for everything that He's done for me in my life. Uh, never thought it would happen, but with the, <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> you know, with on the list of the names with all those guys on there, I just it's just a great honor and accomplishment for me, and I I, I feel like I'm just highly favored. Right We're going to have a lot of fun. We appreciate your being here. Marvin Jones, thank you for being here. Thank you. Number nine, Peter Warren.